we're going to talk about dilations today. So the other transformations um, on the coordinate plane that we've talked about are translations, which is a slide. Okay, we have talked about reflections, which remember are flips. And we've talked about rotations, which are turns. Okay, so we've talked about slides, flips, and rotations. One more change, um, another change that a shape could make is called the dilation. And that's when a figure is um, grow, it grows. So it's either growing or it is shrinking. Okay, so the shape itself is going to get bigger or it's going to get smaller. And the scale factor the scale factor is how much the figure is growing or shrinking. And scale factor is represented with the letter K. So if you see K equals 2, our scale factor is 2. If you see scale factor is 1 tenth, our scale factor K equals 1 tenth, our scale factor is 1 tenth. All right, so you've got to think about if our scale factor is 2, that means it's going to multiply by 2 in size. Okay, and if our scale size is one-tenth, you're going to multiply it by a tenth. That means you're going to take a tenth of that shape. Now, of means to multiply, okay? So if we take a tenth of something, we're multiplying it. And I'd like to talk about what that looks like when you multiply a fraction real quick. <clears throat> so if I take half of something, that's multiplying. So let's start with something like half of ten, okay? We know that a half of ten is five, but how did we get there? What did we do to 10 to get five? Um, well, we do multiply it actually. And so let's multiply the way we know all fractions. We put 10 over one, right? And multiply straight across. So numerator times numerator, 10 times one, and denominator times denominator is two. And that's 10 divided by two. So really we're dividing by two. We divide by that um, denominator. Okay, as long as your numerator is one half, one, uh, you don't really have to worry much about the numerator. So if we took a half of this, we would divide by two. Um, sorry, so 10 divided by two, or 10 over two. Okay, um, so if I'm gonna take a third of a number, so let's go with, um, let's go with 39, and I wanna take a third of this. Okay, if we multiply this by a third, I'm going to divide by Three. And essentially the reasoning why is I'm going to multiply my numerators. So 39 and 3 times 1 is 3. So you don't have to write this all out. Just know that if I take a third of a number, I'm going to divide it by 3. Okay, 3 goes into 3 once and it goes into 9 three times. Okay, so we're always going to multiply our scale factor. So I'm going to multiply both of these coordinates by 2. And before we do that, let's draw this. Let's draw the original image. Okay, we've got, so let's run negative four and jump three, one, two, three. And run two, jump three. Oh, let's label those A, B. Let's run two and jump negative one. That's C and negative four, one, negative one is D. And that's the original, so they're not prime. And before we forget, let's do that down here real quick. Okay, let's draw that original figure. Um, you might notice that it is the same shape. So negative four, three, A, um, two, three, B, um, and two, negative one, C, and negative four, negative one. If you need to pause while you're drawing that, go ahead and do that, please. All right, so please make sure you've got both of those drawn. Now let's start our dilations, okay? Um, so I'm gonna multiply both of these by two. So draw your two right there and draw your rainbow like we're distributing, okay? So two times negative four is a negative eight. Now, we're never gonna have a ne negative scale vector. Okay, you're gonna grow um, and get larger, and you're gonna grow and shrink. Um, 
I just said grow and shrink. I just caught myself. So you're going to multiply and grow or you're going to multiply and shrink. And so think about the kind of number that's going to make our shape shrink. Um, kind of like with that math I was showing you. Um, if I multiply, I'll just stick with 10. Okay. And if I have a scale factor of 2, I'm multiplying it by 2, right? Um, what made this number 10 smaller? Um, what turned it into 5? What kind of number did I multiply it by? Well, we multiplied it by a fraction. Okay, let's figure out another way we can make this smaller. What could I multiply it to say make it 2? So what kind of number? We know it has to be... Um, I'm trying to think if you figured out what number we're comparing this to. So it has to be a number that's smaller than... Let's try 1. 10 times 1. If I multiply it by 1, it doesn't change. So I'm going to multiply this by 1 fifth, meaning I'm dividing this by 5. So 10 divided by 5 is 2, right? So I took a fifth of this number. Um, if I take any number smaller than 1, it's going to make this number smaller. However, if I take a number bigger than 1, it's going to make it bigger. So our scale factor, essentially, k, our scale factor, if it's bigger than 1, then our number is going to get larger. But if it's smaller than 1, then it's going to get smaller. Okay. So if I multiply even by 1 and a half, that's bigger than 1. That will make the shape grow. And if I multiply it by 9 tenths, it will shrink. Some good numbers to know are um, 1 half is actually equal to 0 0.5. You'll see that. Um, and the reasoning is, remember this is division, 1 half is division. So I've got 1 divided by 2. 2 does not go into 1, so I add that decimal. But 2 goes into 10 five times evenly, right? So when I subtract, I have no denominator. Uh, sorry, no remainder. Um, another one to know, 3 fourths is 0 0.75, okay? Um, and 1 fourth is 0 0.25. Okay, these are going to be very helpful when doing your homework um, or doing any dilation if they're giving you a decimal instead of a fraction. Okay, now we're going to multiply these by 2. Um, you'll never have a negative because in order to make a number smaller, it won't be negative. It will be less than 1. Okay, so if a number is negative, if a, sorry, a coordinate, if a one of your ordered pair is negative, it's going to remain negative. And that's important because that'll help us check our answer, and I'll tell you why in a minute. So 2 times 3 is 6. Let's multiply both of these by 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Whoop. <laughs> 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Um, and don't worry about those negatives, really, because it's going to remain negative. So 2 times 4 is 8, and it's going to remain a negative because a negative times a positive is a negative. And 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. All right, so these are the primes now. So let's mark them. So run negative 8 and jump 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that's a prime. Don't forget to mark that prime. Let's go 4. And 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, B prime. And C is going to be, oh, C is over here. Run 4, jump negative 2, C prime. And D, negative 8, negative 2 for D prime. Um, so what do you notice? Let's just look at A. What do you notice about A? The location of A and the location of A prime. Um, maybe you'll notice that they remain in the same quadrants. Okay, so B is in quadrant 1 and so is B prime. A is in 2 and so is A prime. D is in 3 and so is D prime. C is in 4 and so is C prime. So really, no matter what I multiply these two by, Let's just take A for example. No matter what my dilation is, this is going to be a negative, my X is going to be a negative, and my Y is going to be a positive. 
So if I run negative and I jump positive, the only quadrant that I can get in is quadrant two, okay? And this is always going to be positive, positive. And the only quadrant that gets me positive, positive, running and jumping is quadrant one. So if a certain point is in a quadrant and you take a dilation, no matter what your scale factor is, it's going to remain in that same quadrant. So let's say I accidentally, um, for D, ran negative eight but jumped positive. I would be able to check my work because D and D prime should be in the same quadrant and they are not, okay? All right, let's do this one now. Um, so again, A prime is gonna be in quadrant one, B prime will be in quadrant, sorry, two. B prime will be in quadrant one. D prime will be in quadrant three, and C prime will be in quadrant four, okay? Um, our scale factor is now a half. So in order to take a half of a number, I'm gonna multiply a half no matter what, I always multiply my scale factor. Okay, we've gotta figure out how to take half of a number, we divide by two, right? So we're gonna divide that by two, divide 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 by two, Kind of helps to write it this way. Um, I don't know, I feel like it helps, maybe it maybe makes a little less room for error. So four divided by two is two, and it's a negative, so negative two. Three divided by two, you can do three halves. You can do one and a half or 1.5, and I'm gonna write, I'm gonna ignore that, that's really small. So 1.5 or one and one half. I really don't care which one you use. It's whichever one you feel more comfortable graphing. Two over two is, one, three divided by two, again, um, one and a half. Uh, two divided by two is one, and a negative one divided by two, well, think about it. Let's pretend like it's not negative because it might just confuse you. So what is half of one? It's one half, right? And you might even notice that's just one over two, one half, so we're negative one half. Um, negative four divided by two is negative two. And again, we've got a negative one half there. Okay, so negative one half. Sorry, these aren't big enough and I don't wanna write them there. So now let's graph this, all right? So for A, if you're a little confused by the halves, let's, we'll figure that out. Okay, so I'm gonna run negative two, one, two, and then I'm gonna jump one and a half. Be sure you actually go the one and a half, not just a half. So one and a half, all right? So that's A prime. And I'm in the same quadrant. So B is going to be one, one and a half. So I'm gonna run one and jump one and a half. So right between one and two. And that's B prime, marking it there. C prime, we're gonna run one and jump negative one half. So that's C prime. And D is negative two, negative one half. So that's my D prime, and let's connect. All right, does it look like the same shape? Yep, if I end up with a line like that's slanted um, or diagonal and not horizontal or vertical, may I, I'd probably know it's wrong. If a quadrant, if one of these points is in a different quadrant, it's wrong. Um, and essentially, another way to think about this is if I'm growing, all of my points are moving away from this zero, this uh, vertex, or um, I'm sorry, the origin, zero, zero. So A is going to be moving away from the origin. B is moving away from the origin because it's getting bigger. C is moving away from the origin as D is moving away from the origin. So the whole shape is growing away from the origin, zero, zero. And here, if it's shrinking, Every single one of these shapes just gets closer to the origin. So if you happen to do math wrong sometime and you do something like D is down there, or maybe even both C and D are down here, um, you've got to think, are you growing closer to the origin? Okay, so that's another way to just check those errors. And we can do this last one. Um, so our scale factor is three. So ask yourself right now, is this going to grow or is this going to shrink? Well, k is above one, our three is greater than one, so it's going to grow. So let's graph this first. Run one, jump three, it's k. Run three, jump two, l. m is run two, jump negative two. And n is jump, run negative one, jump zero. 
so M. All right, so I'm gonna multiply this by three times three times three times three. It is nice to write this here so that you don't accidentally um, add three or just, um, I don't know, I've seen errors being made that way. So we distribute to every single one of these. So three times one and three times three. Go ahead and press, pause the video and do this yourself and see if you get them right. Three times three, three times two. Um, three times two, um, that's a negative. Negative two times three is negative six. Careful that negative. Three times negative one and three times zero. Okay, so a zero remains a zero. Um, all right, so run three, jump nine. One, three, one, two. Actually, I'm gonna keep going and just follow that nine right there. So K prime. Um, run nine, jump six. One, two, three, four, five, six. L prime, so again, both of these, they're in the right quadrants. They've just moved away from zero. And M runs six, jump negative six, and six. So we're in the same quadrant. We just moved away from zero. And negative three, zero. And so N was not in a quadrant, it was on the origin. So it should remain on the origin. There we go.